Oh, hello. Hello, I didn't see you there. Uh, how are you all today? Welcome to my backyard, and this is Yavin with lemons. Today I have a great poem prepared for you from one of my favorite authors, T.S. Eliot, from his wonderful novel full of cat poems. I am going to read for you today, Growl Tiger's Last Stand, with my trusty companion, Cha-Cha and the Lemons. Growl Tiger was a bravo cat who traveled on a barge. In fact, he was the roughest cat that ever roamed at large. From Gravesend up to Oxford, he pursued his evil aims, rejoicing in his title of the Terror of the Thames. His manners and appearance did not calculate to please. His coat was torn and seedy. He was baggy at the knees. One ear was somewhat missing, no need to tell you why, and he scowled upon a hostile world from one forbidding eye. The cottagers of Rotherheath knew something of his fame. At Hammersmith and Putney, people shuddered at his name. They would fortify the hen house, lock up the silly goose when the rumor ran along the shore. Growl tigers on the loose. Woe to the weak canary that fluttered in its cage. Woe to the pampered pekingese that faced growl tigers' rage. Woe to the bristly bandicoot that lurks on foreign ships. And woe to any cat with whom growl tiger came to grips. But most to cats of foreign race, his hatred had been vowed. To cats of foreign name and race, no quarter was allowed. The Persian and the Siamese regarded him with fear because it was a Siamese had mauled his missing ear. Now on a peaceful summer night, all nature seemed at play. The tender moon was shining bright, the barge at Molesley lay. All in the balmy moonlight, it lay rocking on the tide, and the growl tiger was disposed to show his sentimental side. His bucko mate, Grumbuskin, long since had disappeared. For to the bell at Hampton he had gone to wet his beard. And his bosun, Tumble Brutus, he too had stolen away. In the yard behind the lion he was prowling for his prey. In the fore peak of the vessel, Growl Tiger sate alone, concentrating his attention on the lady, Griddlebow. And his raffish crew were sleeping in their barrels and their bunks as the Siamese came creeping in their sampans and their junks. Growl Tiger had no eye or ear for aught but Griddlebone, and the lady seemed enraptured by his manly baritone. Disposed to relaxation and awaiting no surprise, but the moonlight shone reflected from a thousand bright blue eyes. And closer still and closer the sampan circled round, and yet from all the enemy there was not heard a sound. The lovers sang their last duet in danger of their lives, for the foe was armed with toasting forks and cruel carving knives. Then Gilbert gave the signal to his fierce Mongolian horde. With a frightful burst of fireworks, the chinks, they swarmed aboard. Abandoning their sampans and their pullaways and junks, they battened down the hatches and the crew within their bunks. Then Griddlebone, she gave a screech, for she was badly scared. I am sorry to admit it, but she quickly disappeared. She probably escaped with ease, I'm sure she was not drowned, but a serried ring of flashing steel Growl Tiger did surround. The ruthless foe pressed forward in stubborn rank on rank. Growl Tiger, to his vast surprise, was forced to walk the plank. He who a hundred victims had driven to that drop at the end of all his crimes was forced to go flip. Oh, there was joy and whapping when the news flew through the land. At Maidenhead and Henley there was dancing on the strand. Rats were roasted whole at Brentford and at Victoria Dock. And a day of celebration was commanded in Bangkok. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Gavin with Lemons. I hope you have enjoyed this. I'll see you next week. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay quarantined, stay inside.